Hey guys, welcome back to Old Car Guy. Today it's Panther Platform content for you. We're doing a tune-up on Blackjack. Stay tuned. So I know we haven't had a lot of Panther Platform content since the solo B-roll challenge. And if you guys don't know what that is, I'm going to put that video right up here. You'll see what we did with Blackjack. Um, under some slight throttle going up a hill with this car, it's been hitching a little bit. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's either a coil or spark plugs or water in the fuel or dirty uh, plug fuel filter. But we're going to change the spark plugs today. And if you guys know these 4.6s at all, you know that they can be problematic. I'm going to show you a few tips, hopefully, that uh, may get you through it a little bit easier. And we're going to change the fuel filter, uh, which I've done a video on that before when I changed it on Grandma. But we're going to we're going to do it on this one too. And I don't have any help today. I don't have a companion, a duff dog, like Tom over at Morski Repair. Wish I did, um, but we're doing it solo today. And well, I got to show you a few things before we actually get started. So let me get the cover off, and we'll dive right in. All right, so on these 4.6s, the fuel rail runs right above where the coils and the spark plugs are. No big deal, they're only held on here with these, uh, looks like probably maybe eight, 10 millimeter bolts. And we should just be able to kind of move it off to the side or maybe even pull the uh, injectors out to gain access to them. But we've got all this uh, crap and uh, looks like we've had some friends ugh, visiting. So I'm going to grab the vacuum and get all that out of there first so we don't get any of that stuff down into the combustion chamber when we get a spark plug out. So uh, I'll vacuum all this out and we'll come back and we'll show you the tools and everything that we're going to need to get the coils out. Now a lot of the questions that I get from guys uh, in the comments on these cars is uh, can you do a video on re replacing the intake? And as you guys know, I've got two of these cars. One of them is an 04, this one's an 03. Um, two of the probably best Panther platforms out there, and let me show you the first reason why. One is they still have a throttle cable. It's not electronically controlled, so you can do a lot of mods to these cars without having to flash the PCM on them. 04 was the last year for the cable-driven th uh, throttle body. 05, they switched to a electronic piece there. But going back to the intake, uh, on both of these cars, I've had Grandma for two years. I've had this one for probably uh, six or seven months now. And neither one of them to date, knock on wood, have given me any trouble with the uh, intakes on them. So I haven't had to do one yet. But rest assured, if the time ever comes that one of them does fail on us, uh, I'll be sure to do a video. A couple things we got to get out of the way, like I said before, was the fuel rail. Uh, but also over here we've got to get rid of the air breather so we can kind of access some of that stuff and we may even have to take a portion of that uh, throttle plate off to get in there. So I'm going to get those done and then we'll show you everything that we've got to do the tune-up on this car today. Okay, so before we get started I wanted to show you guys all the stuff that we've got for today's project. Most importantly we do have the spark plugs and these are Motorcraft. Um, a lot of people say, well what would you recommend? And my recommendation to that is put in it whatever came in it from the factory. This is not a high horsepower, it's not forced induction. You don't need hotter or colder plugs. This is what the car called for. So SP-479 plugs right from Ford. Uh, same thing with the coils. Now, yes, I have eight coils here. Am I gonna use all eight? Well, I don't know yet. Um, but a regular tune-up might tell you to replace all eight of these. Um, these were about 24, uh, 24 or $5 my cost. So yeah, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks if you're gonna replace all of those. And I got these at Napa. I did not go with the Ford ones because the Ford ones were quite pricey. And we've also got a uh, CarQuest Premium Fuel Filter. 86595 is the number on that. We'll be getting underneath the car uh, later to do that. I've got all eight here because I want to kind of inspect them as we take them out of the car and see what the boots look like. Make sure there's no uh, shorting uh, coming through the boots, stuff like that. And the idea is, is that if we have to do all of them, well, it's not the end of the world. This car has about 250,000 miles on it, so we don't know if those coils have ever been done. 
But when I started taking things apart here, I did notice that uh, this one right here, and I think Ford would call that number two. I'm not sure how the cylinders go, but I think it's the same as the old ones, one, two, three, four. Anyways, this one had a cleaner top on it, so it tells me that one may have been replaced at one point in time. But we're gonna take them all out, we'll inspect them and see what everything looks like. I do have the fuel rail loosened up and popped out of place, so that will give us access to those coils and the spark plugs. So we're getting ready to dive in, yank out a spark plug, take a look at them, see what they look like. Uh, I'm gonna replace them anyways, regardless of what these look like, so let's get into it. So one thing on these 4.6s that you want to be aware of is the fact that if the spark plugs have been in there for a long period of time and it's a high mileage vehicle, carbon can develop around the uh, threads. So when you go to pull that out, she's going to come hard. If that's the case, don't just keep cramming on it. Do it like you're tapping a hole for threads. Just kind of pull it back a little bit and go back down and then keep coming back and back down and keep coming back and back until you get it out. Because what that will do is that will help break up those carbon deposits on the threads and you won't be trying to grind those threads up the whole way through your uh, spark plug. These engines have been known to blow spark plugs out and then you're into a Healy coil uh, and into a really big mess. Cross, for, cross my fingers today that we're not going to be into that but uh, this one came really easy the first one and it seems to be uh, just coming out like they should on any other vehicle. So something tells me that uh, these have been done before. But uh, we'll know as soon as we get them out what they look like. So that one doesn't look too bad. It's brown all the way around. Lots of electrode there. This is a Motorcraft Platinum plug. It actually looks like it's burning fairly clean. Now sometimes there's a big debate on whether you should be putting anything on those threads before you put them back down in there. I'm a believer that putting something on it is a good idea. So we're just going to use a little bit of penetrating fluid and uh, hopes that uh, in the future that'll be enough to uh, pull those out of there again one more time, if ever need be. Now I also told you we were going to be checking coils and uh, this coil here has an original Ford factory part number on it. So my guess is, is that if it was ever replaced, it was probably replaced at the dealer, but it's quite possible that it is the original. Now the boot seems like it's in good shape. There's no cracks, there's no discoloration. You, can, you can't see where there's been any uh, uh, you know, arcing coming through the boot anywhere. And uh, I think this one is probably gonna be a good one. We're gonna keep it. So we're just gonna pop it back, pop it back into place and plug it in and move on to the rest of them. Now one thing I wanna point out, I guess on number three, or whatever you guys call this cylinder, like it's the wrong one, anyways. It should be number six. We have a Chevy. So anyway, on this third one back from the front, uh, we did notice that the boot was a little bit wet. Uh, sorry, this is the wrong one. This one here. This is the one that I actually had to pry out the uh, boot out of the hole because it stayed in there. There's a little bit of moisture around the edge of the boot, and I think that's just a little bit of oil leaking from the valve cover. But again, uh, this one here has an aftermarket ignition coil on it. It does not have Ford part numbers, uh, unlike the first two. So when I pulled the spark plug out, it was also loose. I'm not sure why it wasn't, uh, wasn't even tight in there, but whoever was in here last time uh, didn't have it very tight. But I mean, as long as it was making a seal, that's what's going to cause them to pop out. You get exhaust burning up through there and chewing away at that aluminum. Anyway. Uh, this one here looks good. We're going to pop her back into place. Now a little bit of a different story back here on the back cylinder. Uh, this boot is thick and it's brittle at the end. Like that plastic just breaks right off or rubber or whatever it's supposed to be. The coil itself is gray not black. So again, tells me that this one likely was changed at one point in time. And when I unplug it, and check the numbers on it. There's actually no numbers on here. You can just kind of see that clear uh, silicone. No, no, not silicone, silicone. Or whatever it is, that gel that they use to close these things in with. So uh, 
just because those pieces were bent and that's all hard and, and, and baked in there, I am going to replace this one coil. We haven't reached in there yet to see how easy that plug is going to come out, but uh, I'm going to say that one there needs to be dealt with. And this one's real fun to get at because there's like a emissions hose in the way or something, whatever that is. Whatever it is, it's getting unplugged. Maybe. Or not. Come on. I feel like I'm having one of those vice grip garage moments. Help me understand. Oh, that one is in there tight and does not want to move very well. I guess it's loosening up just that first little crack. It was a little tight. Of course, it's not loose enough to spin out of there by hand. Maybe I need another longer extension. Yep, that'll do. Oh, you son of a gun. And that one there, if I had to say, looks like it's worn worse than the rest. I'm same plug though. Anyways. Adding a new one to her. And some of you guys might be asking too, how tight do you tighten up a spark plug? Well, until it stops turning, it doesn't need to be zinging tight because if you're the guy that's going to be changing them next time around, well, go easy on them. All right, so we're going to grab a new coil, stick that in, we'll plug everything back into place. And because I pulled out the fuel rail, there's O-rings down here on those injectors. I've got some lube over there. We're gonna lube those up so they just kind of slide right back home uh, into place and uh, help seal them up in case we have any leaks. So let's grab that coil. And just like I was telling you before with the old one that we took out of there, it's got the clear gel on the top, just like this one. So I'm guessing, and it's gray. So I'm guessing that this old one used to be, uh, or came from Napa once upon a time. All right, so now we're going to grab some uh, some of that uh, lubrication. That's French for grease. And slide those injectors back into place, then we'll move on to the other side. And while you're putting this grease on, it'd be a good time to feel those O-rings and make sure they don't feel like they're cracked or whatever, because if they are, they're going to leak on you. All you gotta do is get them lined up and just a quick little have a time plop in there like that. And then we take our little eight millimeter studs that we yanked out of there and screw them back into place. Just like that. That's French for precisely. injectors in. Make sure you hear the click. And the other thing you don't want to forget is if you unplugged any hoses uh, or vacuum lines, stuff like that, this is a time to remember. I got a couple of vacuum lines here that we pulled off. One goes to this little electrical piece, and then this one goes up under here to whatever this vacuum device is here, part of the EGR system maybe. And then we had a little piece go on that little pressure regulator, and oh yeah, this hose vent tube for your positive crankcase ventilation. All right, I'm gonna move over to the other side. I'm not gonna cut back into you unless uh, we find something interesting. Okay, so we're buttoned up underneath the hood here. My battery died on the GoPro, so I'm resorting to the phone. So all we've got to do now is get the car up in the air and we're gonna change out that fuel filter. I've already been up there before I realized my battery is dead. 
and it's got these little nylon locks that uh, actually generally are pretty brittle. And uh, this fuel filter that's in there is rusty. That's how long it's been in there. The new one that we get from CarQuest comes with the four of these new locks, two big ones, two small ones. So let's get the car up in the air and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about. So that's the fuel filter. Rust to rust, amen. And based on the bracket, I could understand why that might be rusty, but the actual filter itself is just, just pitted so bad. Anyways, I've got the locks out of each end here and uh, we're gonna get those pulled off. We might have a little bit of drizzle of gas. We've got a hose clamp here that we gotta take off and then pull these lines off. Should be good to go. Hopefully that comes off all right. And we don't break anything. That does not want to come off there. Easy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. She don't want to come off, boys. Oh, look at that. Loosened up that clamp and she's leaking around the fuel filter. Cigarette? That's a good thing we're changing it. We just gotta get that there first. All right, we finally got her. Now it's time to uh, check for leaks. We're gonna let the car down and uh, prime that pump. Yeah, and here I thought the uh, spark plugs were gonna be the issue of the day. Anyways, we got the rusty parts, the fuel filter out and the new fuel filter in. I just gotta put that hose clamp back on and we can tidy this job up. So uh, give me a few minutes, I'll clean up. And I'll be right back with you. Now for the test, make sure she starts. Like a boss. So let's get this thing out. We'll take it for a test drive and see uh, if that little stutter or hesitation has gone. Well guys, I just came up the hill that normally it would hesitate if it was going to hesitate and well, it did no such thing. So sounds like we've got everything all fixed up. We got the spark plugs. Uh, we've replaced one coil that I think might have been uh, a little bit of an issue. The plugs that come out of it did not look that bad. So we've also got uh, a fuel filter after messing with that. Like I said before, I was just so surprised that we ended up spending a lot more effort on that than we did on the spark plugs. I thought the spark plugs would have made the problem on this 4.6. But anyway, there you have it. You know how I do it. And hopefully there's a few tips in there that you guys can learn from. And that way you know exactly how to do it when the time comes for you. So I will leave a link in the description box down below for the spark plugs as well as the coils and fuel filter. If you want to head there to my Amazon affiliate and you can get uh, those off of Amazon and ship right to your door as well. I also want to remind you guys that the Focus brand old Car Guy tees, this is the Dale tee I'm wearing here now, as well as the uh, old Car Guy and the Focus tee on its own. You can get your very own at the first link in the description box below on my Spreadshirt store. So hopefully you'll head over there and support the channel and uh, buy some merch. And maybe there's something there that you'll want to wear. Car Guy and Six Fan Show is every other week with myself and Grant Tommy, who is straight Six Fan. I'll put his link up here. You guys can uh, head over to his channel and subscribe to him because it's a joint effort for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. We alternate every other week, and one week it's on my channel, and the next week it's on his. And we do have lots of great guests. We're coming up on our awards ceremony very, very soon, and uh, where you can win some prizes, but you got to be there in the chat live to qualify. So. Hopefully, we'll see you guys there on either mine or Grant Tommy's channel and uh, promise that you'll have a good time. We're, there's always lots of guys in the chat, lots of new channels that you can find and uh, have a lot of fun. So, having said all that, that's going to do it for this video. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. Love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.